Yo folks and welcome to the channel, my name is Bork. In today's video, we'll be covering the Halloween event, how to tackle the very hard boss, what's worth in the actual meta gotcha, and what to do over there. But let's go ahead and jump into this event quest right here and talk about a few things. So it is worth it to farm out these hard nodes every single day, and you're actually going to want to get Miyako to four star. But let's talk about the very hard boss because I know some folks are wondering what's a team that can one shot this. So you can see this team right here, it can actually one shot it on auto, but if you jump here onto the discords and then you go into the pinned comments there's going to be details on Halloween Shinobu, Miyako and then most of all we get the teams for the Halloween very hard event and just note that Akino and then Yukari teams that you saw early on fan subbing these ones definitely work the biggest thing is that there are going to be other teams that are not going to be on auto they have lower requirements but you're going to do like timings and stuff so just note there's no indication of like gear that they're using but you can essentially see alternative teams now, June has to be like the most important character in this because of her defense breaks and not to mention the boss is very keen on hitting like the first three units and Makoto's kind of squishy. So she doesn't want to be in the first three slots. So it's kind of interesting in that sense. But one thing to note is that this Yukari team right here, it's not the most consistent. Funny enough, the Akino team is actually a little bit better. And I think it's because Akino has a little bit more firepower and her heals are just slightly bit better. Now, one thing to note, I guess if you wanted to min-max this, you could essentially have like Makoto do her UBs before like you know Kaori does anything else but it's up to you how you want to do this leaving it on auto has been a very key thing for this fight specifically because you don't really have to worry about anything is like the ranks for Kaori and Jun does it really matter do they have to be 11-3 no the only reason why you would 11-3 or Kaori in the first place is you want her to survive longer in arena this is actually a improper format for her in CB in all actuality so you know hopefully you left yours at 10 6 but be honest like i said i'm retired so my carry whether she's at 10 6 or 11 3 doesn't make huge differences but you can see here this is the issue with this team like we already had carry die we had 20 seconds left on the clock so in case this happens to you you can just go ahead into the menu or you know just close out the game i don't think we're going to be able to finish this fight so let's just go ahead and close it and that's one way to essentially soft reset in case you guys are having issues where it's like oh i can't one shot the team now is it it worth it to essentially be like oh do i have to one shot the team to get like maximum output in my opinion no but it also depends on how hardcore you are for farming halloween miyako because halloween miyako is very important you're gonna want to four star her as soon as possible so we're gonna go ahead and tackle this team again what i really want to see is if makoto can actually get her ubs and we'll just cast it before carry that's like my only goal we might have like you know dropped a couple of things where makoto how might have not went off but in my opinion, it's just really important that Makoto can actually do her UBs before Kauri's and hopefully that helps us out with slight min-maxing for this team in particular. So I have to turn off auto here again so we can actually get Makoto to do her UB before Kauri. That way we can get some slight ticks of damage off earlier. 58k damage, I think that was a great and then the 48k, it's pretty nice. Right now we're doing very well compared to like the previous team. Take that as you will or the previous run because you can see 30 seconds later left and Kauri and Makoto are pretty topped up. I believe last time like Kauri had like maybe a lot less health. This run is probably secure like depending on how I look at it and one thing to note like Kauri is taking a lot of damage hence why she was you know dying earlier but as you can see here we have no issues after I fix some of the timings just a little bit. It might have been due to the crits but honestly speaking I guess this is one way to look at this Yukari team right here where you can slightly turn off auto in order to get more consistency. It's really up to you. This one can definitely auto it but this was just a matter of like hey makoto can you do your ub before carry that way we can get a little bit of extra damage off so we get one halloween miyako shard from this very hard boss right here or extreme boss comes in the future but very hard you're going to want to tackle this because i didn't do my runs previously within a very close time period of like missing a very hard run i recommend everyone constantly doing this every single day it's going to be important because halloween miyako is actually going to be meta defining for clan battles specifically so we canceled our hard slash right there probably it's just something to look into but it's not really a big deal for this boss because we're not min maxing to the point of like climb battle like that's one of the things that i also want to talk about in case you're like hey you know for climb battle is it important if i cancel like hard slashes or like the howls and whatnot yeah it's pretty important technically right there that was still like really fantastic damage i was like 96k so with that we should be pretty good and you can see yukri is a key component to this team because she's providing 
heals to our Kauri. Not to mention Kauri can heal herself whenever she does like her UBs and stuff. This time I'm not touching, you know, the auto on and off as much as last time, but you can see it's also just a matter of RNG whether this team can actually perform. Usually around the 30 second mark, you can sort of tell like, oh, am I actually going to win with this Yukari team or not? Because Kauri might die. And if Kauri dies too early, essentially that's a strong indicator for this team not to do well. But of course, there's also like lucky crits and whatnot. And right there, 15 seconds, we managed to beat this very hard boss again. So this is going to be the team that I have been running. Just note that the Akino team is going to be much better. In case you guys want to see that Akino team really quick, it's going to be this one in particular. And I guess you could also run this team as well. But Summer Tamaki is a little bit difficult to run. Just don't be afraid to run this boss within two teams. Like if you need two runs or three runs or four runs, whatever, still all going to be worth it. And in case you're like, oh, how do I get a copy of Halloween Miyako? You just have to beat the boss five times and then essentially she will be provided to you like so. Just run the boss as many times as possible. I highly recommend it. If you have tickets, go ahead and jump into the hard mode and get Halloween Miyako. Let's go ahead and jump into the metal gacha. Now, some of you might be wondering, is it all right to essentially clear out everything? Now, depending on how much of a rush you are in to actually get four star Miyako, I highly recommend everyone to just reset as fast as possible, depending on like, you know, how confident you are. So if you actually jump here onto the main discord and you go down here, you can see Miss Nyara created an entire post on like the actual Halloween Miyako event. And I also put it here on the Google spreadsheets. Now, one thing to know in order for Miyako to go from a one star to a four star, you're gonna need 250 shards. You actually go into the fan subbing site and then you scroll down. Halloween Miyako is going to be giving us 100 shards from this event. So we still need another 150 shards. If you technically calculate it within the Google spreadsheets, right? You're gonna get like 15 to 17, you know, actual shards because very hard pretty much drops like one guaranteed shard. And then depending on how lucky you can get, maybe you can get like 30 shards from like the actual hard event. Going through like the map in the event quest, maybe you can get 15 shards in the entire time. I'm like guessing you get like maybe one to two shards every single day consistently. And that's a huge ask. So what I'm trying to say is a majority of your shards will probably come from the lineup. So that's why I recommend folks to sort of reset as soon as possible. And in case some of you were wondering, there were extra notes provided by Miss Nyara, where it's essentially saying that, hey, if you are going to be participating in pre-fest, pre-fest is a good way to farm divine amulets, if you want to look at it that way. But just note three to four star is very possible if you do not skip any boxes. But if you want five star Halloween Miyako, then you're going to have to skip all the boxes. It's up to you. I personally don't really need all of, you know, the divine amulets and the jewels coming from these boxes. So I think I'm going to reset the lineups as soon as possible because I really want to guarantee my Halloween Miyako. Another stat that you can sort of look into is if you jump back here into like the discords and stuff, you can see like how many technical like diamonds and jewels it would cost in order to get Halloween Miyako into four star or into five star. So technically speaking, it's going to be a relatively, you know, expensive experience in order to actually get all the refills and go from there and get Halloween Miyako to four star. So it's really up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and reset this so that I can get Halloween Miyako as soon as possible. And in case some new folks are jumping into the game, go into options 100 times and then you can go ahead and skip the animations. That way you can instantly see like, oh, what am I going to be getting? And I think this one is going to be the Yori. So we're going to go back to the list and then we're just going to go ahead and reset the rewards. Yep, reset it. I don't need the jewels. Yes, you want it. I know it cannot be undone. And that's just going to be my path forward because I really want Halloween and Miyako above all else. We got super unlucky with this one, I think. So we managed to get the Halloween Miyako and then we're gonna go back to the list and then we're gonna go ahead and reset the rewards. Reset because we already got everything from lineup two, which is not ideal. Hopefully you can get to like lineup five as soon as possible, in my opinion. That way you can just start farming the Halloween Miyako shard. And in case you guys want a quick review on Halloween Miyako, she is going to be, you know, essential. I already did a review for her on my other videos, but we can cover it really quick. What makes her special is she's nothing like her normal variant. Just note that she deals damage to the last enemy, all right? The farthest enemy and it also afflicts a curse, so it's gonna be damage over time. Her first skill is going to be a TP reduction, but also a stun, which is absolutely insane. There's no one who can do a TP reduction and a stun on one skill. And then not to mention, she can also lower the enemy's physical and magical attack. Not really a big deal, but her main squeeze, of course, she can boost her own physical attack. And she's gonna actually have higher stats 
in the physical department compared to her normal variant, all right? So she's nothing like normal Miyako. She also sits in the middle in case you guys are wondering. I'm gonna go ahead and ascend her to two star and my goal will essentially be to get her to four star as soon as possible because she's going to be really good for Arena and then, you know, like we talked about, she's gonna be good for a CB run and I recommend everyone building her. She's by far one of the most important characters that we're gonna get for at least year one and maybe upwards to year two. Just note that her relevancy will fall off because we'll have like other characters that can do stun and TP reduction, but just note she's gonna be absolutely phenomenal. Let's go ahead and jump into some battle arena and just go over the events. But quick things in order to recap for the Halloween event, you know, run the very hard every single day. We showed like a couple of teams that were going to be good, whether it's going to be, you know, the Yukari team, this one in particular, or replace this and run Akino. Just note that Akino should technically be five stars, so I can't run my Akino. She's only at four star. It is, it does matter for like the extra bit of damage. And then not to mention, get Halloween Miyako, reset your metal gotcha as soon as possible if you can afford the loss in jewels in order to get her to four star as soon as possible because we only get 100 shards from this event. Let's go ahead and jump into some PvP and talk about the actual event. Now, when it comes to this event, the Halloween one specifically, I really like it because it seems like we're getting, you know, 1.5 EXP bonus for newer players. So this is the best time for any newer players to sort of jump into the game, which is really nice, I think. For anyone who's had any doubts of like, hey, you know, when should I join Princess Connect? Now is like the best time ever. And in case you guys want a new player's guide, I made like a stream dedicated to that. For anyone who's jumping in, the best rerolls are going to be June and Makoto because they're going to be great for any situation when it comes to bosses. And bosses are like the main thing to get jewels within this game. Like you can see we're tackling the very hard boss. We're gonna be tackling like the dungeons in the future. But essentially June is also somewhat decent for PvP, but kind of terrible later on. But the biggest things to note, June and Makoto are the ones to reroll for for any newer players. Just really quick, we gotta touch on this because the Halloween event is going to be providing like 1.5 EXP bonus. It's not worth it for, you know, any veteran players, but it's great for newer players. And you can essentially, you know, some people are wondering what's the best stage should like just farm 115. Just go 115, dump as many tickets onto it and level up your player level all the way to 110 and you will be good. If you can even get to like player level 100 by the end of this event, it's worth it. And the max amount of refreshes you should be doing is I think like 14. And you can also see it in the Google spreadsheets as well. Like you should never go above 14 refills daily. If you are like a newer player, you know, six max for people who really want Halloween Miyako. Anyways, if you made it this far in today's video, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Once we hit 27,500 subs, we're doing a giveaway. Thanks so much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day. If you guys have any tips on the Halloween events or any things you guys want to share, you know, leave them down in the comments. I always appreciate it. Thanks so much. Have yourself a fantastic day and see you in the next one.